Hello everybody! In this video, we're going to look at rounding errors and overflow errors with a walkthrough of Code.org's Unit 1, Lesson 5. Alright, let's get going. If you're looking for just practice problems, please skip ahead now. Alright, overflow errors. So overflow errors happen when the numbers that you need are too high given the number of bits that you have. So for instance, if my system uses 3 bits, I can count from 0 to 7, no problem. But what happens if I need to count to 8? <laughs> the answer is, I don't really know. My counter might go back to zero, everything might break, I don't really know. And that's an overflow error. So the classic example of overflow is old cars. Here's an odometer, which has gone 9999.4 miles. They drive some more, and it goes to 9999.9 .9 miles. And finally, when they drive some more, it resets all the way back to zero. This doesn't happen anymore like this. Odometers are electronic, but you may have a parent or grandparent who remembers this kind of thing. So a second well-known overflow bug problem was the year 2K bug. So this bug happened because years were tracked with two digits. So 99 would be equal to 1999. But what happens when you go one more year and the year is 00? Is that 1900 or is that 2000? Is it going to cause the end of the world? So a lot of money and a lot of time was spent fixing this bug. Finally, in 2012, there's a really popular video, Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Oh, 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 oh. Where YouTube declared, we never thought a video would be watched in numbers greater than 32 bits. And as a result, they had to change their view counters to 64 bits. As it turned out, this was a prank by Google. They had changed their counters to be 64 bits way before this. But it does illustrate the need to have enough bits to account for all the numbers you'll need. And thus, avoid an overflow error. So what does this all mean? Well, in terms of programming, truthfully, I don't think you'll run into any overflow errors. The kind of errors you write in an intro type of a class usually don't have overflow errors. But in terms of the AP exam, you may see a question, and we'll go over examples of these later. Another type of error you'll see is rounding errors. And just to review, if we want to represent whole numbers with bits, we'll have our bits represent 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, and so on and so forth. Now, if we want to represent decimals, We'll do the same thing, except now we're going to have our bits represent 2 to the minus 1, 2 to the minus 2, 2 to the minus 3, and so on and so forth. So if we have a number like 8.5, this works really well. I can write 8.5 as 8 plus 0.5, and I can represent this in binary cleanly. But what if I have something like 0.1, 0 0.1? The answer is there's no way to represent 0 0.1 in binary exactly. It's not possible. And I can do this little Python demonstration here where I'm adding 0.1 and 0.1 and 0.1. And when I print that out, it's 0.3 with a lot of zeros, but a little bit extra at the end. And this illustrates that when I'm doing 0.1 in binary, it's not exactly 0.1, it's just slightly off. And you might think that these tiny numbers don't matter that much, but they can. And here's an example. Here's the launch of the Ariane 5 rocket. It exploded on launch and never made it into orbit. This was a $500 million loss. And the reason was there were not quite enough decimals to account for the correct behavior. Ariane 5 was slightly faster than Ariane 4, and that tiny error caused the explosion. This is the Patriot Defense Missile System in action, intercepting missiles from the sky. But back in 1991, in the Gulf War, the software was slightly buggy. Because of rounding errors, the numbers were just slightly off. And when intercepting missiles from far, far away, that's enough. The Patriot did not fire, and the missile hit, causing 28 deaths and over 200 injuries. The worst single event with respect to injury for the United States in the Gulf War. And then you have this example here, where because of tiny, tiny errors that get compounded and compounded over time, we call this the butterfly effect, the value of the stock index was two times off. So those are examples of rounding errors in the real world. Rounding errors were even the subject of a movie, Superman 3, where the company has, you know, half pennies, quarter pennies, and the character played by Richard Pryor asks the question, then what happens to all those half since the company gets it? He hacks the computer, he takes all these half pennies, and soon enough, he's driving around in a Ferrari. Unlike overflow errors, rounding errors are things that will show up and will affect your code. There's a couple of things you want to do. The first is to make sure you keep all the decimals until the end. So these are from scratch, floor, ceiling, round. They appear pretty much in all languages. Don't use any of them until the end. Maybe at the end you want to get rid of some extra decimal points. That's okay, but don't use them until the end. Rule two is that we can't compare floats or doubles or whatever it is that your language uses. So for example, if I have a program that adds 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and I want to check if it's 0.3, I can't just check to see if my number is equal to 0.3. 
Why? Because of rounding errors. In this case, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. When I add them all up, it's 0.3 and just a little bit more. So instead, what I need to do is check to see if the two numbers that I'm looking for are really, 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 really close to each other, as I've done here, where I'm using an absolute and I'm subtracting one from the other. And again, you want to do this as a last step. Don't use anything like round or ceiling or floor before your final checks. Here's the walkthrough of the code.org activities. The first is the overflow widget. So you see here, this looks just like the car odometer. I'm taking numbers on the bottom, my values. I'm converting them into binary. Here, I jumped ahead a bunch. And the numbers are increasing. At some point, I don't have enough bits for the number I'm trying to represent. And the numbers overflow, and I get an overflow error. At some point later, even in the decimal system, you'll see this as well. Here it is. The decimal system overflows and goes back to zero. This widget is just to show you so you can see how it looks rather than just having somebody explain it to you. The question is then basically asking you what happened and what you saw. And what you saw was that the numbers reset at zero and they kept on going. And once that happens, these numbers are not reliable. Question three is a question about rounding errors asking if we can represent all possible fractions. We already know the answer to this. We already did it. For instance, we can't represent 1 tenth or 0.1. And the answer is no, because some numbers can't be written cleanly with powers of 2. And to avoid these errors, we're going to make sure we don't round early in our codes. And we're going to make sure that we don't compare decimals. Instead, we're going to test for the difference between the two, the absolute value of the difference between the two, and make sure that difference is really, really, really small, smaller than some tolerance. On to the questions. Question 1. I have an 8-bit counter that counts the number of visitors to my website. On the 128th visitor, the counter goes from 127 to minus 127. What am I likely seeing? So right away, I think you know when you see these numbers roll over, you're seeing an overflow error. So right away, I think you can answer A without thinking too hard about it. The answer is not B. It's not a syntax error. A syntax error would crash your code right away. It's really unlikely. It's a logic error that fails on the 128th visitor, and there are no decimals. So rounding errors are not something that we want to care about here. And there are no decimals, so it can't be a rounding error. Now you might be asking me, but Dr. Wu, didn't you say that 2 to the number of bits is equal to the combinations and 2 to the 8 is 256? Why is it rolling over at 127? And the reason is, in this particular example, we're using one of those bits for the sign. You saw there's a plus or minus 127. So one of those bits is used for the sign, which means that I really only have 7 bits for numbers, and 2 to the 7th is equal to 128, which, if I'm counting numbers, allows me to go from 0 to 127. So anyway, the answer here is A. Question 2. Bull Gates tracks money with 32 bits, and 32 bits is equal to 4 billion. Bull Gates has $4 billion now and doesn't care about pennies. Bull Gates inherits $3 billion from deceased friend Jeffrey Giraffe. What happens? This is a similar problem to the previous problem, except we're not telling you straight away it's an overflow error. You have to recognize it. Given that 2 to the 32, which is what he can track, is 4 billion, and we can't go higher than that. But looking at the answers, you know it's not A, because there's no decimals involved at all. It's not a rounding error. It's not B either, because with 32 bits, I can only go up to 4 billion. So I can't track 7 billion, not without more bits. C, C is true when we're talking about fault tolerance and routers, but it's not relevant to this question. So the answer is D, it is an overflow error. Remember, I can only track up to 4 billion, but I need to be able to track 7 billion. Can't say exactly what happens, but you know there's going to be an error. Question 3, when I run this code, it prints no. What is the likely explanation? So this code is probably something you have not seen before. It is how the AP exam is given. The AP exam is not given in Scratch or Python or any of that. It's got its own code that it gives you with its own terminology. With that said, year after year after year, I've seen kids get it. It's not really a problem for people to get it. You just have to be sure that you know it before the exam. And anyway, what this one is doing is saying x is equal to 20. The arrow is like an equal. Number is equal to 0.1. I'm going to repeat this 10 times where I add number to x. Then I'm going to check to see if x is equal to 21. So what's going on? A, an overflow error, which occurs whenever I add a decimal numbers enough times. Overflow errors do happen, but it's not when you add decimal numbers enough times. It's when the number of combinations that I need is more than the number of bits will give me. That is, when combinations is greater than 2 to the bits. But anyway, that's not what's going on here at all. So it's not A. B, the computer is unable to exactly represent 0.1, so I have a rounding error. And that is what's going on here. 
If you were to print this out, you'd see that X is equal to 21.00000003 or something like that, something really small, but slightly different from 21. Remember, you can't compare decimals, at least not reliably, in computers when you're programming. See, C and D are actually both true, but they have nothing to do with this problem. So lossy compression does irreversibly lose information, and the digital divide does mean you want to give internet for those who lack it, but they're not relevant to this problem. So the answer here is B. Now, interestingly enough, if I do this operation in reverse, meaning that after I add 0.1 10 times, I subtract 0.1 10 times, I do get my original number back, which is 20. And that's because as I introduce errors from rounding errors going up, those errors are removed going back down. But that won't be on the exam. It's just if you're curious. Question four, my computer program uses three bits to track numbers. I have two binary numbers, 110 and 011, which I add. What happens? Well, this problem is going to make me do some math. So 110 is 6 in decimal, and 011 is 3 in decimal. And when I add 6 and 3, I get 9 in decimal, which is 1001 in binary. But now I have a problem because I only have 3 bits, not 4. So looking at the answers, A, I get 9 and my program tracks 9. I do get 9, but my program can't track that 9 because I don't have enough bits. B, an overflow error, that's exactly what I get. The sum is too large to represent with three bits. With three bits, I could go from zero to seven, but not to nine. So the answer is B, an overflow error. C, a rounding error. C, as it's written, pretty much defines a rounding error, but I don't have any decimals, so floating point representations are not really relevant here. And D, heuristics, I do use heuristics when I can't solve a problem exactly, but this is an exactly solvable problem, and heuristics are not relevant here. So the answer is B. And question five, which of these are true? One, rounding errors occur because a fixed number of bits cannot represent some decimal numbers exactly. This is true. This is pretty much the definition of rounding errors. Two, in a hypothetical situation with unlimited bits, one could represent every single decimal number exactly. This is not true. Some numbers, no matter how many bits you have, cannot be represented. You could think of this kind of like irrational numbers. No matter how many decimals you go out, you won't be able to represent the number exactly. And three, some decimal numbers may be off by very tiny amounts, but these errors are tiny and do not matter. This is true sometimes, but it is not true all of the time. Especially if I power these numbers a lot of times, use these over and over again, these errors can grow and grow and grow to where at some point they will matter a lot. The example I gave of the stock price being off by a factor of two is an example of this. So the answer here is A, one only. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.